Are you guys joining a? Pairs work as well. Does everyone have a worksheet in here? So this is what you're, we're going to go through one scenario with you. Okay, so we're going to model for you. Again, like we do for law students and like we do for high school students. So on your sheet, you've got four different, you've got areas for four different scenarios. And then you've got different questions that relate to your scenario. You can take the, you have a quicker yet. All right, so this is our first scenario. Do I have a volunteer in the room that will read this scenario to the class? Or has it been taken? Uh, although I don't know if Joe Sue is Joe Sue. Hosway. Uh, Hosway. Sorry. Aaron and Hosway have been married for 20 years. They have four children, ages 7, 9, 12, and 16. Hosway works at a restaurant and often comes home late at night. One night he gets home and tries to open the door. He unlocks the door, but it does not open because the deadbolt has been locked from the inside. He goes around to the back of the house and climbs up the tree in the backyard so he can see inside his bedroom. Josue sees his best friend Sebastian in bed with his wife, Erin. Josue becomes enraged. He quickly climbs down the tree, picks up a rock, and hurls it through the window. Josue then pulls himself up the window ledge and into the window. He grabs his gun, which he keeps under the TV stand in the bedroom, and shoot Sebastian to death. All right, so that's our scenario. <laughs> that's our scenario. So this is a focus on criminal law. So welcome to criminal law. <laughs> <laughs> well, in law school, you get really, you're really used to dealing with death, especially in your world class. Um, but not to me. So this is right in the scenario, right? It's kind of a final scenario, and it has death and a murder. But you have within it all of the elements that go to a particular, a particular uh, type of murder. So we're going to ask you to walk through this. So yeah, so on your graphic organizer, the first question is that that's yeah. on there is how did the victim yeah. die? Do you want to go through with your group? How did, how did the victim die? You can go ahead and work through all the questions. You can work down the first one, and we'll come back. We're going to give you about five minutes to work through the questions. So let's say who kills Anger, jealousy. Anger. Jealousy. Mm -hmm. Is this like strictly correct, or are we? I think we're. Yeah, yeah it's so we have to sort of extrapolate a little bit. So, anger. 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 There is intent. He climbs up to get the gun to do it. So he doesn't control his rage. It's not spontaneous. It's not spontaneous. How long is it? How long is it? It's a crime to have sex with somebody who doesn't have a No, no, but is it actually is it considered a form of adultery? Is it a couple more minutes? Is it a couple more minutes? Is it a couple more minutes? Is Okay. What would you call this type of homicide? Is adultery a crime? Let's say, okay, let's well, that's what I got. We don't know. Good question about your question. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, so when I read what are the components or actions that make up the crime, are they only the actions of the person who committed it, or are there actions of people that led to it? That's a good question. So I think that uh, it relates back to the one before. The one before is why or why not. I think we can add in the actions of other people. Yeah. 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 So is there an idea to get that? Sure. Yeah, that NBC part of it would be what preceded the crime. What, what led to that, uh, to the rage, or right. the, yeah. the, 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 the There is a word. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. What is it for that kind of murder? That's a good question. Oh, it's somewhat of a general passion. Kind of passion. I know, I know. It doesn't have a passion for it. We are all the way to the plan. I don't know what this is. Think about 34 times the time the truth. Huh? Because this is the truth. Oh, that was the one you Right. Uh, I'll be better. Whatever you want. Yeah, but how far is it? Yeah, I guess that's the question. Is what is premeditated? I think that's one of the questions. So it's premeditated. Uh, so he sees what's happening. Right. But he's still got to climb in. Find the rock. Get back up. Get back up. So we did go through the guns. Right. Right. How do we do? The answer was. So the question is, what's the time frame of premeditation? So who really killed him? Was it really this way or was it Eric? I think we all killed him. Setting up realistic expectations of marriage and fidelity that we as a society have to do. And to this. It wasn't be slow. I mean, I don't know. 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 I so if we can, we're going to work through, I think, just sharing out our answers that we went through in scenario one so we can kind of get a feel for the room um, before we move on. So the first question on there is how did the victim die? So someone want to share, I think you'll probably all have a similar answer. So someone want to share that? Gunshot. The shot. And then who <laughs> killed the victim? Josue. Josue. Who is Josue? Who is the husband. You're the husband. Okay, so we've got Josue, and Jose's husband. husband. Okay. What about why? Homeowner, essentially. And these might differ. Why? Why did he kill him? Well, he says he was yeah, revenge, anger, okay. jealousy, so we've got rage. rage, revenge, jealousy, right. emotion, betrayal. Like, I, strong emotion. Strong emotion. Strong emotion. Okay. All right. What about the next one? Should the person be tried for murder? And then why or why not? This yes, is because there were a series of steps. He chose each step leading up to the thing, so it wasn't just the first of anger. He, there were some steps he took and choices he made. Okay, so he had he he made a choice to do that, and so we think that that's like the window. He got into the room. He went to the gun. He pointed the gun. He pulled the trigger. That's a Absolutely. lot of stuff going on. And what does that show for us? We talked about intent. that. Intent. So intent. So we have intent. So we. So you're yeah. saying there's some kind of culpability here. Because there's intent to do it. Right? And, and premeditation. And you think premeditation, okay? Does anybody else think premeditation or no premeditation? Premeditation, yes. Well, I guess that, that was the question. The time, what is the time frame for premeditation? Is there a crime of passion if you throw the rock, climb up the wall, and get the gun? From the right. information that we were given, we don't think that Jose was at, Jose was at work. I thought, mm, Sebastian's probably there by now, so I'm going to go home and get my gun. And that's not premeditated, but by the time we got down off the tree, so yeah, what's the time frame? So, so what it's sorry, I don't know. No, so it's an interesting question of at what point so this, this whole idea of premeditation is the, the, does the passion extend to the whole from when you see it to when you shoot? Um, or is it something that starts the minute you get the gun? But even this idea of the crime of passion, so you brought up is it premeditated or is it a crime of passion? What's the difference between those two things? Why'd you bring it up? Why does it make a difference? Uh, well, I think the crime, idea of a crime of passion is that it's 
that kind of maybe kind of question, what is the right word for responding instantly to something with it when you're out of your control? Reflective? Well, there's some various, I guess, spontaneous. spontaneous. So it just happened, right? Like you, well, cry of, I mean, cry of passion has significance. I mean, it has, a common law, it has legal significance in terms of, so there's, there's a, we talk about this over here, it's the versus the, the betrayal, these strong emotions, right? So there's certain things that in our legal system we've defined as you get, you know, you get to be mad about these things. If you witness your child right. dying in front of you, but if you witness. Yeah, that's exactly. What but, but the difference that? is an honor killing, you know, which mm -hmm. we don't accept, which is murder, is different from responding uh, with a kind of temporary insanity. Okay. So would you say that the temporary, so when we asked that second part of why or why not should the person be tried, I mean, so we gave the term murder, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like those for uh, folks who are, I mean, especially high school students, they are not versed in, or some of them are, but the whole distinction between murder one and murder two and all of those things, right? So we recognize that people in this room, you probably already have an idea of you know, crime of passion, but so should should this person, in, in your mind, and we can take it up a step, you know, would this person get murder one and premeditated murder, or would it be lower because of the, the passion piece? What do you think? I think it'd be lower, but above like accidental, so <laughs> okay. manslaughter or whatever, like above that, but not premeditated. Okay. So so you've got it on a scale, right? So that's perfect. So you're thinking about it as like you know. We've got accidents over here. We've got, I plotted this for six months over here, and you put it somewhere in between. So it's less than, maybe, in your mind. And, and you have factors. I, wonder, I have nothing to announce. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's actually part of that. That's okay. Right. We're asking you to, to, it's okay if you don't know. We don't, we're not asking you to know or to, you know, that's okay. But isn't this a state of mind question? We it, always it see on television. Right. You're, you're pulling out all of these points. <laughs> so when you mentioned you've got factors, we do have factors. And some of the factors that you're all raising here are factors in what's going on. So there's the state of mind. Was there a temporary insanity? There's this crime of passion. There's passion here. That and something actually happened that we considered to cause passion, right? right? He didn't stub his toe and then get out a gun and shoot Sebastian, right? He saw Sebastian got his wife. Those are different, right? So you're <coughs> looking at the differences in those two. And also the degree of premeditation. You're, you're talking about how there's some kind of thought that's gone into it. There's intent here. It wasn't just totally, you know, it accidentally happened, nor was it planned three months from now, as or beforehand. As you mentioned that when he was driving home, he didn't necessarily think about shooting Sebastian. It was only once he saw Sebastian or through the window did that premeditation hit. So those are all elements. And the fact that you say that this is what we talk about creating meaning from prior knowledge, this is what we're doing. You have all this prior knowledge, and now we're asking you to create meaning from it. Because especially with all types of learners, but certainly you know, our law students and our high school students, <laughs> that when they create the meaning, they can, they're putting it in their own terms. right? So if we say, hey, here's murder one, here's what it is, it's memorization that's, that's making that connection. But when we say, do this, and you tell us what that definition is, and you tell us what the name is, we're not going to tell you, what do you want to call it? It allows you to really create those more stronger connections in your own mind. So what would you call this? It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be, well, what, what would you call this if you could call this type of homicide, this type of killing? There's no wrong answer. Not a test. <laughs> if you were writing your own law, you know, you were writing, what would you call this type of murder? Manslaughter. No, it, uh, not real. Right. <laughs> 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 you know, so why would you call manslaughter? Uh, because it would uh, be a perfect defense to a, a homicide, and so okay. I know in my structure it would go down, and so that's where it would go. Okay, so you would call it manslaughter. What would you call it? I would, I would say, I would call it something that would be like precipitating event killing, like something that okay. came before it that would tell you that, that it was not just, like there was something there okay. that, that connected. Sure. Yeah, see, I, I would bring values to I, I wouldn't excuse it. Well, if you don't it excuse it. It is what it is. No, I'm just saying, it's not, it's not precipitating. It is the wrong thing to do. You shouldn't kill somebody for yeah, having but sex. Do they, but, do they give, <laughs> but do they get the same punishment as the husband who hired the hitman and the hitman who went to kill the wife and they've been plotting it and paying for it for six months. Like, is it is it the same punishment? Because that's really what we're talking about is the punishment that they get. No, I'm talking about whether we excuse it. Yeah, I don't know what the punishment should be, but I'm just saying separate from punishment. 
there's no excuse for killing somebody for having sex with your wife. Okay, so it's, it's a killing. So it's a killing. So it's a, it's a, it's killing. a culpable killing still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think, and Carlos, you mentioned it was, um, so Manflutters was down one, and I don't see your name text. Josh. Josh, okay, so then Josh mentioned, so we have some, there's a participating, precipitating event with the killing. So that's similar, right? And so this, though, is a great example of what, what we're going to do, I, wanna, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so we're yeah. going <laughs> to stop the conversation here, but we're going to let you, we're going to ask you with your groups to do the, fo- the, the following three scenarios together. We'll hand them out. So the key here, though, is, and I think we've gotten to this point in the discussion, is that you are creating the scale. And that's essentially what we're asking you to do in this exercise, is the scale we're talking about with murder, you're, you're going to create it. Yeah. So you can just do them together. Mm-hmm. Okay. So can we do these each, you know, rather than read them all, should we like read one, do one, read one, do one? Because I'm not going to argue with them unless we do them. Are we doing, so each of us is doing all three? Okay. Well, you, can, you, can, you can do them however you like. Okay. Ideally, you can work together. Okay, yeah. Scenario two, because I was hit with the same one as the Both broke both wrists. Uh, interesting. What I, I went crazy with when I was hit. And it, everybody said I was in an accident. And I was in an accident. Somebody, I was in a green light right. walking across the street, and somebody yeah, I mean, I ran a light and hit me. I said, That's not an accident. So, is it, so that's not an accident. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting. But he also had, he had the light. He didn't run through a light. Yeah. The light was yeah. green. Yeah. green. Yeah. These people were walking across yeah. against the light. They were already in the crosswalk. What does that say? Even my, if they're in the wrong, technically, yeah. the driver has to keep the wrong. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I mean, they should have busted and drove themselves. But he failed to notice who were already in the crosswalk. The light was green for him or for them? For him. But then he was on the text day. Um, so wait, but we can agree that um, he killed the victim because he wasn't paying attention and hit two pedestrians. Yes. Yes. No, that's that's yeah, why. Yeah. Not paying attention. Okay. So should the person be tried for murder? Why? 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 Because you're operating heavy machine, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 He was texting. Oh, well, you can't drive. I mean, yeah, that's the deal. Well, I'm also on the road. He should not be tried. But he did have the right of way. But the pedestrian takes the pedestrian. Like they shouldn't have been crossed. Oh, sorry. That was it. I'm sorry. He had a green light. If the scenario were different and it was like dark, right, and he wasn't texting and he didn't see them, and they were in the crosswalk, and he hit them, it would be different, right? The texting makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 What are the definitions? Did, yeah. Did you say? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 well, no, it's a, it's a thing about that, right? And, and 
And we make a choice, right? Why did why the person kill the victim? Did you call it an accident? That's true. Did you know about life, too? I didn't say it was an accident. I said I wasn't paying attention to the death. But I would say Good, because we're going to ask you, so don't let me die. Yeah, he wasn't intending to kill anybody. Like very different from yeah. the guy with the gun. It wasn't from that. Okay, so you yeah. use the word intent. Yeah. So yeah. that's there we go. We already get that out there. But there's a lack of intent. Did you need to or did you not need to? And you would care. Yeah. I'm still yeah. killing. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think this is not going to put some of No, it's actually not a big deal. Yeah, it's definitely a big so you should be shot for murder then that's what I was going to say. So what are the things that go backwards? What are the things that go backwards? Clearly he's a fault. I don't know if that... I think we can hold that. What are the components or actions that make up the crime? So this is where it becomes questionable because then you could also say like the pedestrian was intoxicated. And at least partially at that. Yeah. I could say the pedestrian was um, jaywalking is the right thing. But the yeah, so I mean, they were. Jaywalking is the right thing. You were crossing against the light, which is, so in fact, it was made Or bring up the victim. So you didn't have the victim. Sure. That's the thing. That's always yeah. play into the culpability. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's your fictional world, right? So you're good to decide that, right? Right. I mean, I guess it would also it would change the scenario if the victim ran out in front of his car at a green light, being intoxicated. Right, but it just means the victim plays a role there because you would look at it differently. It was not a slow moving thing. I think most people would call this an accident. So there was some level above the word accident. Okay, and so what do you think? Can you think of one that would make it more, more than an accident? But less than we're saying less than intentional or so, uh, something in between that? More than an accident. You said negligence. Yeah, I was in the last of the year. It's not a, what did you call the negligence? Like he's, he's got this big vehicle, right? That Criminal negligence. That he knows he's supposed to be in control of, and he's not really in control of it. So the idea that you have a responsibility for right. right. legally we call that a duty, right? A standard right. duty. Yeah. We didn't get there, right? I mean, right. And we're calling that Which that was the negligence, right? Violated. And in and in doing so, what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, y'all got two more. Well, she told him she wanted to die. So she did say. She, she, asked so she did her. express her wish. No. 
I don't understand why he didn't get killed in the hospital. Like, yeah, it's Wow. Oh, that's not legal? Well, no, I'm like, four guys. Oh! Saved up some sleeping pills and took them all at the same time. Yeah. She might have done that, you know, yeah. even without him knowing it. But in this case, he didn't ask her. And I didn't know what her what her parents. Yeah. She, she made him sick. Yeah. I would agree. <laughs> I think they are also putting the pressure on. I think it was made of like not necessarily saying that he was meant to be bad. Healthy, but. I do think we do have to kind of think about what his what his state of mind was. I think that's really important. He's been driven crazy by watching his mother be so so much in pain, so sick. Um, Yeah, I think that's. This would need Clarence Darrow or something. This would would take a big defense. You know, if they gave you some more fat, well, we'd go on to the next one. Yeah. Against the light, 
they were also intoxicated. One of the pedestrians was able to clear the vehicle, the other was not, and they were tragically run over. Okay, so we've got this, this tragic killing. Again, you know, this is the law school, so we walk the death, but you know, really used to it really quickly. <laughs> tragic killing, we are so sorry. So what <laughs> happened, uh, it, it, so we know what happened, but what are the what are the key factors, the key elements that, that really made up that crime for you? Uh, I think you know, of course, we, we have to emphasize that the driver was using his his, his yeah. phone, uh, phone. Uh, and that is, of course, a, a crucial element okay. to this. Although the you know otherwise it wasn't or anything like that. But then also that the uh, the victim was not obeying all the traffic laws themselves. Okay, so let's let's start with the, the using the phone piece. Is that culpable? And so is that killing? The person died. Is that killing a culpable killing? This middle group, I think, talked about that a little bit. So, can you define culpable for me? So, I mean, culpability, right? So, there's a um, culpability. Like blameworthy. Blameworthy, or yeah. So, if something is culpable, yeah. do we excuse it entirely? Like when we talked about the first scenario, it was maybe lesser, but not completely excused. So, here, mm -hmm. the person didn't mean to kill him, right? I mean, we have that. There wasn't that the same element, but yet, did the person do something that's worth blame? Yes. Yes. We talked yes. about. We said criminal negligence. Yeah. Okay, so criminal negligence. So, what about made it criminal? When you get behind the wheel of an automobile or a bus, you have you actually use the word responsibility um, to make sure that you're operating that vehicle because it's a powerful vehicle. And it would be the same thing if you got drunk and got behind the wheel, right? So you could be paying attention, but you're impaired. Mm -hmm. and so he was impaired okay. in a way. Uh, I read in the papers about a category called vehicular homicide. Mm -hmm. So that. That is a, so different states have called it different things, right? And so in some cases, in some states, you might have something that just, so you mentioned criminal negligence, so it's negligence, but it's because of whatever, because you are operating or doing something that could really cause harm to another person, it rises to the level of criminal negligence. And some people actually have a specific, within criminal negligence, you have vehicular homicide would be one of those. And so the idea is like, I didn't take a knife and stab you, I instead used my car as my weapon. And right? you might, so some states might even have vehicular homicide and there's kind of different levels within that. At yeah. what point, you know, is it manslaughter if you're, you know, there's there's reckless, you know, that's going to come into play and that's above criminal negligence. So there's all that. So we're not going to get into that level. But we have this idea of negligence and the negligence piece attaches to the what. So we have the criminal piece attaches because the person was operating this vehicle and could have hurt someone, and he did. And what's the negligence part? I think mean, it kind of goes back to what Ian said and about then following basic operations of the vehicle that okay. everybody knows you should follow. We shouldn't be texting and driving. Mm -hmm. All we shouldn't be texting and driving. Okay. So those are the two seemingly components that you made out. And you mentioned, uh, Larry, you said you called it criminal negligence. What else would you call it? Is there another name that you gave this? Everyone, great. What, what did you call? Well, we weren't sure if it was reckless endangerment, but I had the thought criminal negligence. I don't think it was that. No, I think so. Criminal, but you're bringing out other. So you thought it could have risen to the level of recklessness. Why? I didn't know um, that criminal negligence was not good enough. Okay. All right, great. Go ahead. Well, that's a really quick thing I would say is it does call into question everybody's responsibility, and it's like scary because it makes you think like you're supposed to be serious at all times and think about your responsibility as a citizen in every way because then you could also call into account the pedestrian's responsibility. And I think probably throughout all of these scenarios, that's a question like not just the perpetrator of the crime, but or the person being tried for the crime, but everybody's responsibility. Okay. Carlos did yeah. just point out uh, to us something that I really didn't want to hear that pedestrians always have the right of way. In the crosswalk, yes, yes. 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 Even if the light, even if they're walking so, against the light, yeah. yes. So this, yeah. yeah. So this is what. So this now that I know it, I'm just gonna walk the track. This is what we're talking about. In some okay. states, it, it's any it's any pedestrian is put in any part of the street. Yeah. So. I'll go quickly down that. And then we, we, I want to get back. Yeah. So the whole idea, right, is that if you're operating a vehicle and someone's coming down the road and you have a green light, you cannot hit them. And that's, that's even if even if you have the right away, right, you cannot hit them. So it is, you know, yes, you shouldn't be. But this whole idea about what you're bringing up. This is a, because we're kind of in this university setting, I, I will go down here really quickly. There's a, in tort law, which is when you hurt someone but it doesn't rise to the level of criminal negligence, 
this is this whole idea of contributory negligence comes into play. So just a quick difference between that, right? OJ was acquitted on the criminal side, but he was convicted in the civil case and he had to pay money. So when we talk about torts, we're paying money. So when someone walks through, you know, is in the pedestrians were intoxicated and walked down the street, you know, they might say, hey, besides going to jail, this guy owes us $100,000 or $200,000, and that can be taken into consideration. No, you were drunk and you blah, 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 and so that will be taken into consideration. In certain states, it's different, but generally. So in North Carolina, in North Carolina, if you're contributorily negligent in any way, you don't recover at all. Yes. So you get zero money if you contributed yes. at all. Um, and so some states do it by percentages, right? So 20, 80, or whatever, but North Carolina says, too bad, this bad. You contributed, you get nothing. Um, All right, we're gonna we're gonna go to scenario three. We're gonna, we're gonna run through the scenarios. We want to get to the data piece. We want to. So we so far we've got scenario one. Who can just tell us what that was? What do we call that? We had this passion crime related murder. Passion related murder. So passion related murder. Two was we had this criminal negligence. Okay. So three. Where who wants to go three? Go to the middle. Kind of move around. It's a quick rundown and then kind of how to answer your questions. So there was a son and he um, was witnessing his mother um, dying slowly from breast cancer. It, he was pained to see um, the pain that she was going through and so to put her out of her misery, he decided to give her too much medicine and overdose um, and without her knowledge and it killed her. Okay, so what do we have there? Is, how is that, what, what, what are the components there? Premeditation. Premeditation. <laughs> so is that premeditation different than the sway? Yes. Yes. Why? It's Sean, why? He's got three days between the time I'm going to take these pills and I'm going to make her her favorite soup, and then I'm, there's a lot of thought that went into that. He said time was there's one of them, time. and then he used some thought and details, right? So he had details and he had he time. He had to plan how he was going to give her these pills without her knowing it. So at the time, the state of it. The state of mind time question is the same, I think, to me, because his state of mind watching his mother. So he could do it, he's doing it for love and it's a mercy killing. Okay. Okay, so so you're putting that type of the, the love seeing a parent in pain is the same thing. So you're you're categorizing it as that that strong emotional attachment that might evoke a strong reaction from a person to no. killing someone. Okay. So then going back to the premeditation part though, for you, does the premeditation here, you said it goes back to that time element. Larry, is it different to wait three days and get the pills versus, I mean, it, you know, so Josue, there was a time elapsed be between the seeing in the tree and the getting into the room, but is there a difference there for you? Well, his mother said she wanted to die. She okay. was in terrible pain. Sebastian didn't ask to be shot. But she never explicitly said that she wanted to die. Yeah. yeah. She, she didn't say, go get the pills and give me an overdose. Right. So what does that call when somebody says, I want to die? If, he, if she said, kill me, please, what is that? Directive. Directive. It's a, uh, what if I, if he has permission, she gave consent, right? So we could think about, can you consent to being killed in that way? Yeah, right. That's, um, that's good. And so, and so you, you brought that out, right? So, and, and your idea is that you think she could, right? She could consent to being killed in that way. And she did by telling him that, and he, and he did what she asked. And you, I don't think you agree. I just think it brings into question a different sort of use of the word of responsibility. I don't think it's anybody's responsibility to take another person's life in their hands. And so I think that regardless of her feelings, even if she did request it, that's not up to him to make that decision. Okay. So he made the soup, put it next to her, and said, "There's lots of sleeping pills in that soup. I'm going to leave it there." If he didn't uh, tell her, <laughs> if he didn't, uh, I'm not going to do anything. All right, wait, no, but I'm going to bring it back. You're, you're both raising up good points. What is your name? Sorry, Ladonna. Ladonna. Okay, so Ladonna, I think the point that you raised though is this whole idea of it doesn't matter. So you're not looking at the emotion; you're just looking at the action. So there was okay. So this person got pills, planned to get pills, planned to put it and essentially killed another person. So you're taking the emotion out of it. Yeah, I'm not completely discounting the love piece, but at the end of the day, it's a life and it's not their responsibility. Okay, my so let's go to what you called this. Because we have, I mean, if you take, you look at just the components of this crime, I and mean, you, you have this intent, the action, the killing, and then you do have the love, and some of you are taking that into consideration, some of you are not. So what do you, what do you call that? 
you would just call it murder one. So that, that's, you're giving the highest level. Because I, I, it seems like you would agree with Madonna then. There was all this and. I wouldn't do murder one though, necessarily. Okay. I would have to put more thought into it, but my first instinct wouldn't necessarily be murder one. Okay. I, if I was, I was thinking if I was on a jury, then I would have to say, yes, he premeditated, he planned it, he did it, she didn't know. But then I wouldn't tell the judge I wanted him to give him the penalty either. Okay, so we think there's some sort of excuse in there. There's some sort of something He's that makes He's probably gonna go out and do it to somebody else. Well, there would be a, a number of things I think it would depend on too. Like, you know, for example, let's say she has no money, right? So there's no other reason that you can, I'm, I, I shouldn't say just the money is the only reason, but let's say there was a whole bunch of other evidence that suggested that there wasn't an alternative motive that he had, like she wasn't really wealthy and she might have lived on for another two years and he was like, you know, let's just get this money now. There was, you know, there was other stuff that suggested that it really was an emotional state too that it wouldn't matter how long it was in some cases, the emotional state might not change over three days. Well, this okay. brought up the, the death of dignity, right? So that's there's one state that we know for sure Oregon who has that. And, and even in that instance, though, a doctor prescribes the pills and the person themselves has to be able to take them, right? right. So it's not, your, your son can't give them to you. You have to be able to do it yourself. We're going to keep moving. So yes. we want to make sure we get here. So, scenario, so let's agree that, can we agree that there was premeditation here on some level, an intent to kill. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna, so we've got a criminal negligence idea, someone did something, didn't mean to kill, but it happened. We've got a premeditation, we've got a premeditation with passion. So the last one, real quickly, let's go to this group. What did you pull out? Why don't you just tell us, let's keep the one happened, let's just go through, what did you pull out? It was for felony robbery. Okay, so you just, you just went for it. So there was, a, there was a crime, there was a felony robbery. So why was, Tommy was, I'm not gonna get into why it was a felony. But there was a, there was a, there was a gun. Okay, so you had a murder weapon, a robbery occurred, and somebody got killed. So is there culpability there? How, why? Because if they were not robbing him, he would not have died. Okay, so it's just part of, you're saying it's part of the crime generally. There's a, there's a little but for there, right? But for their robbery. Uh, who died Cliff, Cliff wouldn't be dead. Right? Exactly. Okay, so what would you call this? Just what she did. Tell me okay. okay, so yeah. these four, so what we would do, and this is where we're going to stop and freeze for and kind of jump out. Sorry, I'm not, I, I'm happy to explain. We'll answer the questions <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, okay, so if we, if we were kind of continuing this with, with the classroom, what we would then do, your next task after we have this four is to actually make that scale. So you would then go back and you would kind of argue in your groups, what's what's the worst, what's the, you know, what's what should be that highest penalty? What should be the least, what should be the least? And so what we're doing there is we're having you create that scale. So we are going to now hand out, has anyone heard of Bloom's taxonomy? Okay, Bloom's taxonomy. So what we're, Bloom's taxonomy, this gentleman, I forgot his first name. His last first name was Bloom. Does anyone know his first name? I talk about Bloom's taxonomy all the time. Bloom. And I should probably look it up. Uh, but he, an educational <laughs> researcher, <laughs> he created a scale. Uh, he created, it's usually called like a, a pyramid. It's, it's a pyramid like the Bloom's So Bloom's taxonomy, on the bottom is knowledge. That's kind of the lowest level of learning. When we talk about just the basic memorization, Right, you're memorizing just basic knowledge, and then the comprehension is the understanding piece, applying it, analyzing it, synthesizing new materials, and then evaluating. So this is the whole idea that when you're teaching, what we're trying to do is move around here. So in, take five minutes, please, and look with your group, and just circle the verbs that fit within the areas of blooms that we asked you to interact with in this activity. So when we, when it, what did we do here? We want you to look at the sheet and identify what we had you do. Does that make sense? Any questions? Hmm. Benjamin. Benjamin. Benjamin Bloom. It was a beautiful name. Uh, Benjamin Bloom. So we're going to ask you to identify what we had you do. Which verbs? We demonstrated the opportunity effects of feminists. Some of these, like with who, how. So we arranged the information. Defined to describe the first three of them. Listed in terms of the elements. Mm -hmm. I did not have that. 
Oh, about the blooms. I was saying so with my law students when they, when we're talking about teaching, I debrief with them this year a lot of times and say which verbs describe what you did in the class today. And so for them to think about is this lower level thinking, higher level thinking. Because um, a lot of times that doesn't mean a whole lot to them. But if they can look at the verbs, then they're like, oh, we created or we really that makes sense. <laughs> well, in different Many fewer people. words, and, you know, it's like, well, you have to train in program evaluation. Well, that, so, that, <laughs> that, that and definitions together. Do right, to right. help you. Yeah. And a lot of times, we're all just they just can't focus in enough on the, yeah. what they're actually doing and how they're going to that. Yep. Okay, so we're going to pull, just, I guess, finish, you know, circle two more or one more, and we'll put you back <laughs> for the sake of time. Right, so this is the piece, and I'm sorry we just kind of jumped into it. We always end up running over because people really get into discussing the activities. But this is the why we do piece, right? So this is the part where we are doing that freeze framing, and we want to know, we wanted, we asked you to identify what we asked you to do. So what did you do here? What are some of the verbs that you used? So why don't you tell me the verb and then the, the area that it falls in? Shout them out. Recall. Recall. Okay, so that would be recall. Recalling of what? The, the facts uh, when you first asked us to explain the scenario. Okay, so we had you here. So you, we gave you something and then we had you recall it. And what did we ask you to do when you recalled it? Ask Ian to do it. We asked Ian to do it. Summarize. Summarize, Summarize. in your own words, right? Paraphrase. Paraphrase. Yeah. Paraphrase. Yeah. 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 Okay, so paraphrase and comprehension. Mm -hmm. And so what does that, what does that do for students when you have them put it in their own words? Seeing if they understand. Yes, it's a check for understanding. Exactly, check for understanding. So acknowledge and comprehension. What else? Clear level. Subscribe. We argued. You argued. Okay, and where did that fall? That's um, when we were saying yes. I think you were here. Yes, I, no, I didn't think you said. Okay, so that's way at the top. Oh, so what were you doing? So go ahead. So you're arguing. What is arguing asking you to do? Case and assemble the, the things you believe make your case wrong. Right. So you have to use you have to re, you have to use points and then use them to persuade other people in some kind of coherent manner. Right. Make a choice using your opinions. Making a choice using your own opinions. So you're that is part of the evaluating piece. Yeah, and that the last word is value. So value to make it kind of the other some. Because the. I'll throw it out that you guys did, you created, right? We asked you to create some things, create a definition, create a, a term, um, which was hard, right? A lot of you were uncomfortable with that. It felt weird to, to actually make up your own. Um, and that may come from the fact that you know there's a real answer, right? And so you don't want to, but often with, with our, our high school students, they don't know that there's a real answer. They're just along for the ride most of the time. And so they will create, but asking them to create, what are they having to do in order to do that? Where are they pulling from? So you, and you guys did it, right? So you yeah. looked at the different pieces, the elements, the facts, and created something from there. Even if, and even if people are uncomfortable because they do have some background knowledge, especially from all the law shows, I mean, in our case in particular, going back to the point we made earlier about using people's prior knowledge to really give them the foundation of true learning the material, right? So it's not just the rote memorization piece, but it's understanding it at a deeper level because it's their own experience that's framing the more complex knowledge that you're giving them. So how, how is this different than just giving them 
I mean, besides what I just said, how how is this different? I mean, how is this different than just giving students information? Um, so, at least for me, when you have to engage with something and it's real, and also you're pulling from things you already know, it's it sticks better mm -hmm. because it you know you're not passive. You're actually doing stuff and connecting with other people around it. And so yeah, it does a lot of things. It engages you in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't looking up there. We were all looking in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. How many of you think you could go tonight over dinner or a drink and explain to somebody this scale of murder in some way? <laughs> think you could give them some the, the, the least culpable, the greatest culpable. You think you could mm -hmm. do that from this experience? Could you at least recount the facts of some things? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would never think about going to law school. <laughs> 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 and, that, and that's the point. That we're trying to make it, we're making legal knowledge accessible. And that's the point. I mean, that's certainly at the university level, that's what we're trying to do for all of our students. We're trying to make it accessible to them. I love the fact that you can give us terms. <coughs> and that, you know, you could actually um, look at what happened. In, in all of these examples and come up with the sense that they were different. And then you could tell us what those terms were, but we had already done the legwork mm -hmm. to figure out you know, why they were different. And now there's just a term that kind of might go with that. And so the kind of the education <coughs> terminology that's used around this is called scaffolding also, where we really scaffolded it because we gave you, besides working with prior knowledge, the scaffolding piece came on top where we, we gave you the building bricks to then put on the outside. We use a construct in, in the clinic, um, which is really used in the world, of the discover, reveal, apply. And so we let you discover by going into those things. Then we reveal kind of the reality of what's going on, right? So we did that, and then you apply that more to what to the other information that you have. And, and we construct our lessons in that way so that you're accessing the information on the front end rather than, let me just, let me just throw this at you and let's see if we can dig anything out of it. You got there by discovering and then we were here. So in the last couple minutes, we want to transition to how can you use this. So Larry McCurdy already made something about how he could use this. Well, I'm teaching a course in social documentary film. And uh, what I'm going to do is create scenarios around the relationship of the filmmaker to the people in the film. And look at that range from making films about people, for them, or with them and then create scenarios like this and look at those choices on that range that they could make uh, and what the outcomes would be if they made those choices on a variety of scales. I haven't worked it all out yet, but I think it applies. It's not as clear cut, but actually the fact that it's open-ended uh, and that there's a spectrum of choices is what I want them to see. Because they tend, for example, to immediately embrace direct cinema, which is that I'm a fly on the wall, I have nothing to do with my subject. But you know, obviously there's great films made where there's everything to do with the relationship with the subject. And so I think I can use this very specifically in two weeks. So That's I'll be great. telling I'll be recording Excellent. that. Please do <laughs> <laughs> how you could use this type of I mean not not necessarily this lesson exactly, but but this type of engagement with your students. Well, I think when I teach management of cultural institutions, mostly nonprofits, and the students always want me to tell them, well, how does it work? What do I do? What are the steps? And they don't really understand that what what is done by others is not what you should do. There's standards of practice that don't work anymore. So sort of have them, and once you start naming things, like this is the marketing department, this is the, then they just start listening as if they're putting a list of things <coughs> under rather than understanding the dynamics. So I like the idea of not naming the thing, making them come up with it. I'm curious how you navigate that in the law because everybody has these names that they use in exactly in their heads from TV shows, and so they've got experience though with nonprofits, right? right? So they they all of us do in some way. Right. So they have some access to what they might think is how it's constructed or the way that looks. So they might be able to get at it that way. Yeah. Um, so I love the really quick, and I love the student code. I mean, creating meaning for themselves rather than you saying this is called homicide and here's the seven rules. Memorize those and come back next week. That's just a very different kind of learning. Does anybody have any questions? There are go ahead. Just uh, resources, yes. Free studies, research yes. tools. So there's um that is a great question. Um, I 
great question. Um, <laughs> so how do you know what you're doing? So what's your basis? How do I know what I'm doing? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so I want to give you your, I want to give you the websites of our organizations. Yes. We actually don't, but if you just, really, if you just Google Marshall Brennan, um, at NWCL, the OWL program will come up, and Street Law. We're at okay. dcstreetlaw.com, yeah. and that'll point you, it's the internal Georgetown site, but that's mm -hmm. where our, our yeah. website lives now, so dcstreetlaw.com. Um, and, and we have our philosophy, we have some curriculum on there yeah. as well, um, of the things we use, um, so that you can get there, and then you'll find all of our contact information. But the, the way, what we're doing is really this whole idea of learner-centered education, it really, if you, there's certain, I mean, we, we know what we're doing through, I guess, through working in the education field and through, um, we're, we're both attorneys, we're both trained attorneys, but we were teaching, done a lot. In my history, I was a Peace Corps volunteer and an AmeriCorps volunteer and taught a lot during law school. And I'm in summer <coughs> camping and have been in summer camping for years and years, and so I work with young people in that way. So we've connected with kind of the education community and where we're going in the 21st century, we're moving towards, if you look at where um, K-12 education is really moving towards, it is much more inquiry-based, and these kind of terms of art, the inquiry-based, discovery-based, this whole, you've heard about the Common Core curriculum, it's all based on students, students, this, this, the students that are learning, they are doing the work, and the teacher is really moving towards a much more, a role of the facilitator, an educated facilitator who's guiding the learning. Um, and so, and actually that the ed school peer group is working on that as well. There's an article on The Atlantic um, that's interesting about a school in Pittsfield, New Hampshire, random rural school, that they have flipped their entire curriculum to Learner Center um, throughout the entire school. And so um, they, from what I understand, were a failing school and thought, well, why not? We're failing already. And <laughs> just went for it. Um, and it's been amazing. And so it's, yeah. it's the account of how it's working in their school. And there's one, one other plug is that uh, the Street Law, so Street Law Clinic has been around since uh, 1972. And in 1999, a couple, the guy who, the gentleman who runs it, his name is Rick Rowe, he's a professor, he's been there since 1983. Um, and he, and he's phenomenal. He has a lot of these wonderful ideas. And two law students in the late 90s, I think it was 99, they were teaching at Baloo High School, which is one of the most, the lowest, the low, one of the lowest performing high schools in the city, still, unfortunately. But they were out there and they came back to the clinic one day and said, you know, we can do this better. And he said, go for it. And Rick is very much open with hey, us doing stuff we want to do. So they created a charter school. So Thurgood Marshall Academy, which is one of the highest performing charter schools, came out of two student, street law clinic students who wanted to do this work. And the whole philosophy is now kind of learner centered focus. And so they took this idea that started in law and it now is through the entire program. And it's become one of the highest performing charter schools. And, they, and what's also amazing is many charter schools that are very high performing, they have middle school. So the kids start in middle school and by high school they've gone through the whole thing. Third and Marshall, you come in ninth and tenth graders. And so what's amazing is they're able to take these students that come in at a higher age bracket and still bring them up to where they need to be to succeed. So I've got <coughs> cards, I've got cards too. I have cards as well. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask you guys to fill out these evaluation cards. Yeah. Okay, yeah. One second. What's your session on? Um, 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 309. 